A while ago now, we did a video on how the decomposition process occurs. And that is the process that will occur for the vast majority of the time. But if you've ever watched a nature documentary, sometimes nature likes to throw a curveball and mess with everything we thought was logical. So in this video, we're looking at some drastically different directions the decomposition process can go in if nature feels like it. Like and subscribe if you find this video interesting. Now let's talk decomposition oddities. So for an in-depth look at the regular old decomposition process, go back and watch this video. But just so that we're all on the same page, this is the general process of decomposition. Autolysis, bloat, active decay, skeletonization. But under specific environmental conditions, the body may bypass this natural path leading to preservation. This preservation, assuming that the body is not taken out of these unique conditions, could have the body staying in that state for thousands of years before it falls apart. So let's look at how this happens. The basic chemical process for making soap, as in, you know, like a bar of soap that you have in the shower, is combining fat or oil with an alkali in warm conditions. Similarly, during body decomposition, a waxy substance called adipocere, consisting mostly of fatty acids and calcium, can form if the body is left in a moist or wet, oxygen-deficient conditions. And if that is the case, you end up with this, soap mummy. It's also called corpse wax or grape wax. Now this waxy soap concoction will stop the decay process in its tracks by encasing the body in this waxy material. Which kind of makes me think of those giant cheese wheels coated in wax, but I am kind of hungry. Anyways, this isn't a problem usually and is great for archaeologists as they sometimes find these perfectly preserved bodies to study. And there have certainly been a number of them over the years. But when there's an abundance of them, that can be problematic. Such as the situation Germany found in itself around a decade ago. So for those who aren't aware, it's common practice for many German cemeteries to recycle graves every 15 to 25 years, when the bodies are expected to have completely skeletonized. But as weather conditions have slowly changed over the years, so has the soil condition in some of these German cemeteries. Coincidentally, when grave diggers started to exhume the graves to turn over the plots, they found that many of the bodies hadn't done what they should have done and instead turned into soap mummies. Many of these cemeteries had to resort to expensive soil reconditioning or unwanted burial chambers in the graves. Not to be confused with what the ancient Egyptians did, because nature can do it all on its own if it wants. Arid sand is great for preservation because it absorbs fluid from the body, and without moisture, bacteria can't break down the body. Also, the heat in the sandy regions aids in drying and preservation. Don't make the joke. Oh yeah. But while this is the most natural version of dry mummification, there is a sadder version that is seen far too often. Individuals who have died at home, alone, and no one noticed. Many of these people will simply decompose naturally, but sometimes if the heater was on when they died and for whatever reason is left running for months, their body can become mummified. There are many quite well-known examples of cold mummification, including Otis, the Iceman, and the many, many dead bodies up on Mount Everest. When an individual dies in these conditions, where there is constant snow and ice, there is no way for the bacteria to grow or for insects to attack the remains. This means that the cells are frozen in place and prevented from decaying, and it stops decomposition in its tracks. As a side note, the bleached white bodies that you see in pictures on Everest, that's the result of the sun bleaching the skin, not from the freezing. These bodies are the ones on this list that will be the quickest to start decomposing in the regular manner once they're taken out of these specific conditions. Many people have heard of bog bodies, but aren't aware of where they actually come from. So let's take it back a bit. So peatlands are a type of wetland environment, just like you have marshlands and swamplands, you have peatlands. Now, peat is the accumulation of partially decayed vegetation or organic matter. It forms when plant material doesn't fully decay in an acidic and oxygen depleted conditions. It is composed mainly of wetland vegetation, including mosses, sedges, and shrubs. As all of this vegetation accumulates, the peat holds water from rainfall. This slowly creates the wetland conditions that allow the area of the wetland to expand. 
A peatland environment can include ponds, ridges and raised bogs. It is the raised bog part of this environment that have the specific conditions to preserve a body. Raised bogs are like sponges of this half decayed vegetation full of water that form the kind of dome shape on the landscape. This is just one kind of bog, not all bogs hold this power. The natural chemicals in a bog involves a completely saturated acidic environment and all this assists in preserving a body by enveloping the tissue in a very cold environment that impedes water circulation and any oxygen getting to the body even while the bog is constantly moving up and down because of the rainfall changes. While Europe, particularly Denmark and the UK are most well known for bog bodies, they have also occasionally been found elsewhere, including Florida in the USA of all places. So there you have it, nature at its best. If you have learned something new or found this video interesting, please help out the channel by liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching from Gary and I, now go talk death.